everyone, I'm Lady T, follow six, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 1 Reunion Part 2. We're going to start off with Mystique. Mystique, our story is that the only reason Molly Mall was trying to get with her for real because she had, that, I guess, in passing told him that she was going to be on Love and Hip Hop. And I guess he thought, hey, I want to be on TV. So, let me kind of, you know... Act like I'm kind of, you know, feeling Masika so I can get me some camera time so people can see this bald head, which is mine. And people could know, people, the people who don't know who I am will know that I am Molly Ma. But Molly Ma was like, no, it was still the other way around. She knew that I was going to be on the show. So she kind of snuggled in on me like, hey, boo, what's good? My name is Masika. I do this, that, and the other. Really? You going to be on the show? Isn't that interesting? You want to be my boo? He, I mean, he didn't say she said all that. But he was like, no, it was the other way around. She knew I was going to be on the show. So she wanted to be on the show too. So she pursued me. Moniece tells Amanda, see, I knew your deal a long time ago. I knew you wasn't right for speeds. And I knew you wasn't right to be around my son. And when I ask you questions, I'm not asking you to get the answer. It's because I already know the answer. I just don't want you to lie to me. I do not want you to insult my intelligence. And you know what? I was really liking Monique's on this reunion. This, I guess she wasn't. She was being funny and it was cracking me up and I appreciated this from her. And she was like, I knew you wasn't right. I was proven wrong. You were not right for them. Well, you were not right for Fizz. And you were not right to be around my son. And we don't forget the fact that she has had little to no scenes with her son this whole season. But we're going to bypass that because she's letting Amanda know how she feels. She's like, see, when you come at me with stuff, this is how you're going to get it. If you call me crazy, I'm going to give you crazy. If you call me a bitch, I'm going to be a bitch. This is what you get from me. So don't be surprised when I jump cross screen and grab hair. Because I told you, do not call me crazy. I warned you. Amanda's over here talking about some, well, I did love Fizz and I just fell in love with somebody else. And now I realize that I love Fizz. And my mom was like, hold up, hold up. Now you realize you love Fizz? Now you didn't realize that when you was having breakfast with old dude? You didn't realize that when you was making reservations in Miami, but now you realize you love Fizz? She was like, well, yeah, I loved him, but now I realize I loved him. And Mona was asking Fizz, did you really love Molly's, or is it that you wanted somebody to be your mama for your son? She was like, no, I just wanted the truth from Amanda. Yeah, not Moniz, but she asked, did you, did you really love Amanda? He's like... I loved her. It wasn't about her being a mother to my son, but it was about being being truthful. Because if we're going to be together, you're going to be around my son. And I don't want my son to get attached to you and then we break up. So I want you to be truthful to us. She was like, well, yeah, I did fall in love with somebody else, but I just didn't want to say anything. I guess she wanted to get a little extra camera time while she could before she broke up with him or they broke up. It's like, well, get this straight. I broke up with you when I found out you were cheating. You never broke up with me. It wasn't mutual. It was like, I caught you several times cheating or going to cheat. And I was like, deuces. Amari and his family, they are better than ever. Miss Leslie and April, they are better than ever. April's like, you know what? Now that I've had my baby, I don't see why, you know, Miss Leslie was right or down for Omari. Because, you know, like, now that I have a child, I, I can see that now. And they've, they've pushed back all that out of animosity they had. Morgan's be, been circumcised. He lets us know that. He's happy about that. I'm pretty sure April's happy about that because she didn't like it. So, the Amarian family are doing great. All right, early princess, Ray J tells you to get up and start fighting. And that's, you do that, no hesitation. So, Morgan and Ray J are going back and forth, which, let me pause for the pause. Why is Morgan's makeup so light? Is it the lighting in there? Because I'm hoping it's the lighting because it's her entire body looks like it's lighter than what it was while they were filming the season. She looks like a shade or two lighter 
than what she was. And I'm hoping that it was lighting in the studio that made her look all the way light and not that she didn't physically, physically went and lighten herself. But back to what I was saying. Ray J and Morgan are going back and forth with each other. He's saying he wasn't loyal. She's like, I never told Tierra Marie y'all business. That business was out the street. They continued to go back and forth. And Ray J was like, Francis, go hit her real quick. And not even hesitating to look like, go, what you talking about, go hit her. She didn't even hesitate. She just got up and went to go swing on Morgan. And Morgan was like, she saw that, heard what Ray J said, and she was up and ready too. I think they got like a punch or two in before security was able to get them. Morgan's backstage crying because she was like, you know what? I was there for him. I was right or die. That was my brother. I loved him. And he going to treat me and do me like this? Uh -uh. We can never be like that again. I'm like princess. Really, you just Ray J says do something. You don't have to hesitate. You don't hesitate. You just up and do it. You just ready to fight right then and there. Like really, is it how this is how we do now? Okay. So young bird sitting on the stage, just chilling, slouched down like he has no kind of spine. Like all the just about all the dudes around were just like slouched back like. They couldn't sit up straight, laid up on whatever woman they were with at at that time. And I'm like, why don't you sit up? Posture. Remember this posture. Anyway, Bert was sitting there talking about something. Yeah, Tira, she was a good friend, you know, real good friend. We go way back. And by the way, Tira gave me head. And Masika's like, yup, mm, she sure, she sure did, because I seen the text. I look up through all his texts, the messages on his house phone. I be looking at his Instagram, his Twitter, his Facebook. Yeah, I'm all up in through there. Yes. I got secret recordings all throughout the house. In case you do kind of cheat, try to cheat, I got the evidence. And this sets Tia Marie off because she's like, no, when I have never did that. She's ready to fight. I don't know was she ready to fight Masika or was she ready to fight Bird, but she was ready to fight somebody because she was like, I don't need you to put my name out there like that. No, ma'am. <coughs> Excuse me. You didn't see me. You didn't. I have never in my life done that. Mm -mm, not with you, Bird. No, ma'am. No, I haven't. And so she's sitting back there just laughing like, <laughs> yeah, all to the entire season were t laughing at me and telling me to leave this man alone. And here you two are fighting over him. Well, they weren't so much as fighting over him. They was fighting over what he said. So, hey, so, you know, you kind of got to ass, But they weren't fighting over him because they wanted to get with him. And they were fighting because of what he said. And Ray J's like, like back and like, ooh, she did that. Ooh, the crowd is going and they all clutching their invisible pearls. Like, oh, my goodness, really? So, Soldier Boy, he is upset he he says him and I are doing good but he is upset Denia did not tell him that, uh, that Teddy Riley isn't her biological father and she's like this is he's been my dad my whole life he's raised me it's nobody's business this is my dad and it's not like you know Nia like said yeah Teddy Riley is my daddy and she didn't even know the man it it all never like laid eyes on him or anything. It's not like she laughs like, yeah, Teddy Riley's my dad. And, you know, and then when Soulja Boy wanted me, and then she's like, oh, yeah, about that, he's not my daddy. He's like, I had to find that on the internet. She's like, that's nobody's business. And he's like, it's public information. But, you know, there's a lot of people, men and women, you know, their biological father wasn't there. Mom may have remarried when they were young and the man or woman that they <coughs> remarried, that becomes their mom or their dad. You know, even she, I guess she don't look at him as like, this is my stepdad. Maybe he adopted her. I don't know, but she's like, this is my dad. He is the one who raised me, who put food on the table and clothes on my back. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. So this is who my dad is. And I completely and totally understand what is she's what she's saying right there. You know, daddy ain't gotta be the one who helped, you know, get you conceived. You know, father, you know, dad is the person who was there for you, helping you with your homework, 
making sure you had food on your table and clothes on your back and making sure you was raised. Thank you, Soldier Boy, for that. So why are you mad that that's not our biological father? I don't know if it's the fact she didn't tell you or what it is, but he's all upset about that. But they don't make it work because they still in love with each other. Yeah. So that was basically the gist of the you know the episode. If I left anything out, follow me in the comment or video response. And like always, I want to thank my subscribers and the people who watch my videos. I want you to like this video, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and your own YouTube. This is Lady C signing off. Have a good one.